this video, we'll find out how to script a SQL Server database complete with database schema and all table data. This is quite easy to do in SQL Server Management Studio. However, keep watching this video as there are a few hidden options that aren't immediately obvious. In this example, I'm going to script the Northwind SQL Server Sample database. So to achieve this, I right click on the database name in SQL Server Management Studio, go to Tasks, and then Generate Scripts. I should just point out that there, there is a script database as option. However, we won't actually be using that. So again, we go to tasks and then generate scripts. This causes the generate scripts wizard to appear and we'll click on next. So in the first part of the wizard, you have to choose the objects you want to script. You can just leave it as is and it will script the entire database and all of the objects. Maybe you just want the tables or the store procedures. So you can optionally do this and you can actually drill down to specific tables if you want to. So we will script everything. Click on next. There's a few options here, mostly about where the script should be saved once it's produced. If your database is quite small, then you can opt to save to the clipboard or open it in a new query window. However, if your database is quite large, particularly if it's got a lot of data, then I recommend that you save it as a script file. This will avoid problems with running out of memory when you're trying to actually open the file. You may overlook this feature, but there's actually an advanced button lurking in the corner here. This is really useful, so let's click on advanced. There's quite a few options about how your database is scripted. I must admit I haven't made much use of these various options. However, there's one that's crucially important, and that's types of data to script. So if you change this drop down, there's the option to script just the schema, just the data, or the schema and data. By default, this wizard will just generate scripts for the schema, i.e. the SQL scripts you need to recreate the database. So if you change this to schema and data, then everything will be created. Another thing of note here is that if you want to export the data into a different version of SQL Server, there's an option here. It actually goes all the way back to SQL Server 2005. We will leave the other options here. And let's click on OK. And for now, I'll just save it in a new query window. So we click on Next. And there's confirmation of what it's going to do. And now it's getting the objects and it's creating our database script. So Northwind database is quite small, so it's only taken a couple of seconds to create the script from this database. And we can click on Finish once it's created. So if we scroll down, we can see at the top it creates the database and various options it sets and at the top it creates the tables I think these are views and if we scroll down further you'll see that there are various SQL statements to insert the data as you can see it does one insert statement per row of data so again if your database is really big then I highly recommend you save it onto disk so that's pretty much all you need to do if you want to generate a backup of your database into a text file. The advantage of this file is that it is of course human readable. It's also fairly easy if you want to import the SQL into other databases like my SQL or other database. Incidentally, when I'm doing my own databases, I tend to run the wizard twice. The first time I generate the schema only and the next time I generate the data only. This gives me two files, so if I ever want to recreate the tables, then I can just open the schema file. And if I want to restore the data, I can just use the data file. I'll just quickly mention how you can use this file to recreate and restore a database. So basically, if I want to make a new database, I tend to just create the database itself first. Then I will do a find and replace on the database name. It's normally in square brackets here. So in this file, I will do a find and replace to put in my new database name. I've also had problems running the initial alt database statements here. So I tend to delete everything here and just leave the first create statement. Also, if it creates a user, I tend to delete that as well because very often the user is already in the database. So I will delete this and then I will run this part of the script 
to recreate my database. When you run this script, just make sure you run it in the right database. It really is a hassle if you need to delete lots of tables and store procedures and other things from a database you didn't want to put them in. So that is how to easily create a script with the schema and database data from a SQL Server database. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.